Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Crowley House Flower Farm and Nursery. Today I'm in the studio because we have a blustery day here on the farm. We have winds tonight, I think that ebb up to 45 miles per hour. And so we're kind of buttoning down the hatches. We also are starting our first order of holiday wreaths that are going to be heading out the door this week. I believe we have about 14 of them that are going out. So we're trying to get everything kind of organized and trying to beat the storm. I think eight o'clock tonight is when the the windstorm hits and um, we'll be rocking and rolling hopefully before that happens done with the wreaths but what I wanted to talk to you about today and as I mentioned in our last week's video I'm starting to pull out some of our scented geraniums and also starting to propagate them so I thought I would walk you through some of the ways that I do that here on the farm now scented geraniums like any good gardener will know are one of those things that are just tend to be a staple of any cottage garden. And as you know, here on our farm, we tend to grow in the cottage design aspects. And part of that is because, well, I don't have a lot of time to tend to my garden. So the more wild and wooly they are, the more time I have to tend to them and the easier they are for me to just let go and let be. And thankfully I like that style. So this time of year, we're starting to pull things out. We're starting to clean up the gardens and propagate anything that needs propagated. The few things here on the farm that we do on a regular basis are our scented geraniums, salvias, and mums. So we grow some heirloom mums, we grow some different types of salvias, and we'll be taking cuttings of those before the frost comes, and especially the scented geraniums. Scented geranium is a staple in our design work here on the farm. So as you know, we have a studio that we design weddings and events, and we also do um, mixed bouquets and things like that. There is hundreds of varieties of scented geranium, also known as a pelagonium. They're native to South Africa. Africa. And so they don't tolerate our winters very well. There's some varieties that sometimes will winter over or self seed and you can seed them you can, which I did this year, I grew Maverick, which I just dug up from the garden and potted up. And I'm just gonna keep that over winter in the little tiny greenhouse where we keep all of our plants. You can grow scented geranium from cuttings. That's the easiest way. You can use water to propagate it, or you can use soil. I tend to like soil because it's a little bit easier. Scented geraniums don't like a ton of water, so they like it a little bit more arid. So the soil, acts as a better propagating medium. You can tell by their really thick leaves that they like it, they can hold moisture in there. And so they like it a little bit more dry. Cinnamon geraniums used to be really popular in the Victorian era. And I feel like they're coming back into the gardens. I don't know about you guys, leave me a comment below. Let me know if you love or hate them. I think some folks don't like the smell of them. They're a little bit strong. But what I love best about cinnamon geraniums is that they all are so different from their leaf form to their smells. So you have some that smell a little bit like a rose or you have some that smell like lemon or lime or chocolate all these different scents in a scented geranium are just so fun also the leaf shape and size is also very different i love that they have variegation to the leaf as far as a color goes i love that they have the edging is all very different i love that they have different colors to them and the size of leaf, all these different things. And it's so versatile in the garden. You can grow scented geranium in pots. You know, and a lot of times you see that where, you know, in a window box where there's this beautiful, you know, red scented geraniums or the, or the most brilliant. And then there's some that are pinks and you could do all kinds of things. You can, you know, add them in with other types of things that you like into a window box. I've seen them in hanging back baskets. I have seen them in those beautiful terracotta pots lining, you know, the front porch. Beautiful. And they just add so much with very little care. So I think for any new gardener, a scented geranium is one of those flowering plants that adds so much diversity and just make you feel like you can garden and do anything because they're hard to kill. Um, I think the only thing that you could do is maybe overwater a scented geranium. Some of the more popular varieties are Lady Plymouth, partly because they have those large cream edged leaves with kind of a lighter foliage. So 
stunning in the garden, especially if you have like a night garden where you have all the white and that scent, if you brushed up against it, so nice. The scent on a Lady Plymouth is a very light rose scent. So that is just a really nice thing to kind of line your edged pathways with. Really nice and mass plantings on that one as well. Citronella is the other one that's beautiful with a lemon scent. Now that one, if you have a lot of mosquitoes or things like that, you deal with water around your area, you would put in some of those and that does help with just keeping the bugs away. And you can take little snippets of it and tuck it into somebody's napkin as far as, you know, if you're hosting something, an event on the farm or on your at your place, in your back garden, on your patio, what have you, just tucking a little bit in, crushing that leaf and having that oil kind of ooze out will keep some of those bugs away as you're hosting a dinner party. And it looks fabulous in a, just in a napkin tucked in. The other one that's really popular is the old fashioned rose variety. And that one is, as you can imagine, smells amazing of roses. And if you line that around some of your roses or again, a pathway where people might be brushing up against it, oh, it's just so yummy and beautiful just to kind of give you that extra element to the garden. Now, cenodraniums also can be used as a house plant. That's the other really cool thing about them is you can have them in your garden, dig up a few of them, and then pot them into some beautiful pots. I like terracotta, but you can use anything that you have available to you and be able to extend the life of them and then actually plant them out again if you want to. You know, sometimes they'll get a little bit leggy, so cutting them back might be a good thing. And also you can take cuttings from each one. Cenogeranium are a perennial, technically. So they will bloom from early spring until late fall. And if you lift them from your garden, and they will continue on. They are just so hardy, especially in colder climates. You definitely are gonna have to lift them earlier than later before the first frost because you'll lose them after that. The growth habits on each Cenodranium are also very different. And from a learning standpoint as a gardener, it's kind of fun to grow some different varieties and kind of see how each one behaves, whether you have to thin them out, cut them down, kind of, you know, some of them get, like I said, really leggy. And so kind of bringing them back into a bushier habit is nice. Some of the older varieties, like I grew the Maverick series um, from seed this year, and they don't bloom as florific as some of the older varieties. And you have to deadhead a little bit more. So there's a little more work to it, but you know what? I didn't mind it at all, partly because I grew them from seed and I had this kind of love affair with them because I had grown them and babied them on and it was kind of a fun project for me. So let's talk about cuttings. So what you're gonna do is with clean scissors or a sharp knife, that's very, very clean. You wanna take your cutting. You want it to be the very tip of the first new growth. And you wanna make sure that you have a few leaves below that because you need that leaf note to be able to have the new roots to form. So we're gonna take a cutting here and we are going to take it into the greenhouse and I'm gonna show you what I do with the rest of it. I'm gonna go brave the rainstorm. Okay, let's go. Okay, so I'm in the greenhouse. Hopefully you can hear me okay, because the rain is starting to pour down and it is cold and chilly and the wind is starting to pick up, for sure. Okay, so what I wanted to talk to you about is how we take it from the cutting that we had in the out in the garden all the way to propagating it and planting it in the soil because that's how I like to do it. Now, like I said, you can propagate cenodranium by putting it in some water. It just isn't very successful or I feel like it isn't. I don't know. If you've had success with it, it would be lovely if you put a comment down below and how well that worked for you. But for me here on the farm, we like to do it in soil. So here is a cutting that I took out in the garden. I just cut the end with a clean clipper. So I used a clean clipper and then you can tell that we've got two very nice large leaves here. And then we have another leaf right here. So there's three of them. And then this little center part, that is actually what's going to create your new plant there. So this is called a leaf node where the leaf comes down into the stem. And so we're just gonna take it and we're gonna pull that back gently 
and off it comes because this if you left it on would suck all the energy out of that plant while it's trying to create those roots so the other thing you want to make sure of is not to have any flowers on the top of your geranium. that will also suck the life out of the plant creating roots so we're going to take this guy off as well and then i'm going to take this one off as well okay so each one of those wounds is a potential spot for new growth to happen and those roots to form. This here is, like I said, gonna be your new baby plant. So we're gonna go ahead and I like to use a rooting hormone. So this is the brand that we use. This is available a lot of times in nursery supply companies and things like that. You can also just get a regular rooting hormone, one of the most mild, like at Lowe's, Home Depot, or any box store where um, you can get just a small little container of rooting hormone. I don't want this long root, so I'm going to cut it just below where we took off those leaves and then this is where we're gonna kind of tidy this up a little bit, pull off any of these extra little things. They're like little extra like leaf parts, I guess. There's probably like a technical name for this and I don't know what it is, <laughs> but anyways. So I got that kind of cleaned up here and now I'm going to use my rooting hormone to dip this in and then plant it in soil. There's a couple things I need to do first. One is I want to take the rooting hormone and put it into a secondary container. I don't like to dip straight into my rooting hormone, partly because you can then contaminate the rooting hormone. The rooting hormone that you have, you want to make sure that it goes in the garbage after you're done with it. So just use what you actually need and throw it away and then that will keep your other rooting hormone very nice and clean and tidy. Not with a whole bunch of dirt and debris and you know, all those things. So what I do, take the lid off, I'm gonna pour some into this shot glass. It actually works really, really well. Okay, so I have my rooting hormone that I pulled and put into my secondary container. So then you wanna get your container that you are going to put your propagating plants in. This is just a little six pack that I had. I do them in larger trays, like a um, usually a 50 cell tray, which obviously there's 50 containers in that little tray, but as a home gardener, you might just have even something like this, you know, where you can propagate it. You can actually put several starts in it if you wanted to do it that way. For me today, just to show you guys how to do it, I'm gonna use this little six pack just because for the ease of it. So the soil is nice and moistened already. I like to take some sort of Sharpie or a pencil and pre push my holes in. Part of the reason for that is when you put your cutting into the soil and you have the rooting hormone on there, the rooting hormone kind of flakes off. Now a question that people ask me, can you do it without rooting hormone? Yes, you can. The rooting hormone just increases your chances of those root formations and a healthy start to your plant. Okay, so I have my rooting hormone here in my little shot glass. I have my cutting that I've already stripped the leaves off of. I'm gonna take it, I'm going to put it into the rooting hormone just like this, and I kinda like tip it on its side, and then make sure that all those leaf nodes where I pulled off those leaves are nice and covered and then I'm just gonna gently tap on the side here and that's gonna just get a lot of the excess off. You don't need a ton of it. So I'm gonna take my cutting and I'm just gonna put it down in the little hole that I created and I'm gonna snug the soil around it just like that. If you had a large leaf right here, you could cut the leaf just in half to allow the energy to go back down to create those roots and not so much into the leaf. If I have one like that, I'll show you kind of what I'm talking about. So say your leaf is like this, you would want to just cut the leaf in half basically. And that just allows a lot more energy to go down into the root and not so much into the leaf. And don't be afraid to do that. Okay, so let's get the rest of them propagated up. And um, I'm just gonna show you step-by-step step how I'm doing it. This is super easy and something that um, if you're a new gardener and you wanna kind of stretch yourself a little bit, propagating is kind of fun. It's a little scientific experiment and um, it can be very, very 
very rewarding. You can get a lot of plants for very little to no money, basically. I mean, a little bit of rooting hormone if you choose to use that, some soil, a clean container, and you're off and running. I know this year I propagated probably, I don't know, 100 or more and filled the garden. I used it actually as a ground cover in some of the areas of the garden that we kind of struggled with filling in plants and things like that. So it worked out actually really, really well. So I'm just gonna kind of go through it one more time with you, peeling off the extra leaves here. Now this is a good example of, there's a leaf here that I might just go ahead and cut just a little bit off the angle of it. I'm gonna cut this a little bit shorter here, clean up any of these little bits. I just kind of pull down, it's almost like <laughs> pulling like a hangnail, I would say. Okay, so fresh. I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in my rooting hormone tamp it off, make sure that all those fresh wounds where I pulled the leaves off are covered nicely. And then I'm gonna go ahead and stick it in my pre kind of poked out hole, sticking it right in again, pushing down gently, snugging in the soil around it. to use a little bit of vermiculite or perlite over the top of my cuttings and the main reason for that is we do grow in a big greenhouse and so the greenhouse itself sometimes you can get like the little gnats that come along or fungus or anything like that that kind of grows on the top of the surface and creates like a hard crust or obviously the fungal gnats which become a problem for the, your new starts so just to kind of keep help keep that under control and also help keep balance with moisture, I like to just put a little bit of, in this case I'm using perlite because we have a ton of it. You could use any type of grit over the top of it, but I just do a generous amount on top around the cutting. It also helps with root dampening, which is right at the root level where the soil and the root are. You can get where the plant will die right there. It kind of struggles a little bit. Um, so that just helps us there with that. So I'm going to go ahead and put a little bit on my two trays that I have done up today. That went really, really quickly. Um, you can see once you kind of get the hang of it, not to be too afraid, just go for it. And you can create a lot of plants with just a few cuttings and really quickly. And it's just worth the time and effort that you do. All right, so let's get this going. Okay, I'm just gonna get these watered in now and you can see how I got the perlite on there nicely. Just a really thin layer on the top there. Some people propagate right into grit or something like this and I'm gonna try my hand at it this year. But um, for now, this is kind of what I know is my safe way of doing it. But isn't that pretty? I love how the green just kind of pokes through that white and just really pops. Kind of exciting to know that I'm growing something on for next spring planting already. And it smells so good. The Cenodranium releases that oil if you kind of crunch the leaf up. And every one smells a little bit different. Like um, this one is very, it's it's got that chocolate kind of color to it, which is really popular in designing. It's a very, very, it almost has like a chocolate undertone to it. Really nice. I don't know, does something for you. Especially on a wet, windy, gross day like today, to come out here and just have it smell so good and smell like spring and it's warm here in the greenhouse. But anyways, okay, well I'm gonna clean up. I'm gonna go ahead and water in the Cenodranium. I hope this gives you a little bit of confidence to try your hand at doing some of your geraniums and any of the ones that you pulled from the garden like this is the one that's the maverick it's kind of that really pretty um kind of light light pink white bloom it's really fun i grew this one from seed i'm just going to clean it up give it some loving i'm going to pop it in the greenhouse and be able to enjoy it throughout the winter but that's a really good way to just add a little bit of color to any space that you have that you can keep growing these on use them as a house plant what have you then plant them out next year or get rid of them if you get tired of them i guess i don't know <laughs> 
<laughs> they're just such a, a very giving and rewarding plant that it's worth doing this extra little step so that you can have these lovely, lovely foliages or flowers in your garden next season. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up. Share it with a friend if you could. That always helps our channel out. And until next time, much success in all you do and grow. And we'll be seeing you shortly back here at Crowley House Flower Farm and Nursery. Bye-bye, guys. Bye.